Sarah Forhats, dangerously cold temperatures out there to ring in the new year. Meteorologist Matt Jones is looking at our first forecast for the day. Yeah, it is looking absolutely brutal out there. We had a little bit of light snow that actually fell last night just to the south of Springfield and south side of Springfield. So you might wake up to a little dusting, but really the snow is not going to be the big story. It's the temperatures. It's 10 now in Springfield. It's even worse though in Nebraska. Hastings at nine below. Let's zoom in a little closer here and show you the numbers. And again, we got the teens there in northern Arkansas. Uh, that tapers off to the single digits across our northern counties. So it, not awful when you actually look at those numbers. But when you throw in the wind, it is a whole different story. It feels like seven below now in Springfield, 10 below in Clinton, and also about seven below in Jefferson City. Rolla is still the coldest spot on the map, 11 below zero right now for your wind chill. And as we head through the next several hours, those temperatures don't move much. I think we'll be lucky to get to about 15 for high today. And it gets even colder for tonight. I'll talk about that New Year's Eve forecast in a little bit. All right, thank you, Matt. If you or someone you know needs a warm place to stay during these dangerously cold temperatures, here are a few options. Take a look at the screen. East Sunshine Church of Christ and Pathways United Methodist Church are both opening their doors for people who need a place to sleep. East Sunshine Church of Christ is the men's shelter Pathways is the women's shelter. Both of them are in need of volunteers. If you can help with the operations, contact the church office and they will get you hooked up there. Well, New Year's Eve is notoriously one of the most dangerous nights on the road. Lexi Spivak tells us about some options to get you home safely tonight. Good morning, Lexi. Good morning, Sarah. As you know, it's supposed to be one of the happiest and greatest times of year, but sadly, that period from Christmas to New Year is also one of the deadliest times of year on our Missouri roadways. Now, according to MoDOT and the Missouri Coalition for Roadway Safety, more than 50 people were killed on Missouri roads last year, starting from December 10th to the first of the year. So just a quick 20 day time span on top of that. 240 some odd people were seriously injured in incidents. Now, now of those fatalities, eight of them were caused by a substance impaired driver. And of those more than 200 serious injuries, 20 of them were caused by a substance impaired driver. So this is a reminder of for everyone this morning not to become one of these facts that we talk about every New Year's Eve. Really make the smart choice, whether it's going to be an Uber or a Lyft that we have in Springfield here now or a cab or taxi company. There's also companies offering free rides. Uh, major brands incorporated is offering free 1000 rides across the state today. So there's really no excuse to not be safe this New Year's Eve. Also, another pointer that I want to give everyone, don't think you're going to walk home from the bars unless you live next door or maybe on top of the bar. It's very cold out. As Matt has mentioned, it's just going to get colder tonight. So let's all use our head this New Year's Eve. Sarah, I'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you. Sounds like a good plan. Thanks, Lexi. In other news now, a desperate situation in the eastern suburbs of Damascus, Syria, after an airstrike hit that area, sending rescue workers rushing to the scene. There they go. An awful scene there. They are pulling survivors this morning from the rubble. This is some dramatic footage shot from an amateur video showing the civil defense workers, also known as white helmets, rescuing kids from the rubble. Residents reported nearly 20 airstrikes from the Syrian regime, dropping more than 100 bombs on that residential area. Just this week, the Red Cross announced it hopes to resume its evacuation efforts of critically ill people from Syria's largest remaining siege area. Last month, the UN called the situation a, quote, humanitarian emergency. Back here in the U.S., a four-year-old girl was found wandering around a playground in Utah barefoot in freezing cold temps. Police later found her mom in their apartment dead. Now the man who found the little girl is talking about that incident. There's a little kid out here. What else are you supposed to do? It's the one thing to do. Marcus King was on his way to play basketball when he heard a little voice coming from a playground. By the time I'd walked over there and saw her just dragging her poor little feet through the snow, I asked her where her parents were and she just kind of, I don't know. Turns out the little girl lived right across the street. Police say her front door was wide open. Four-year-old Emily crossed the street here on 28th by herself, then came over here to the park. This is where Marcus found her, walking barefoot in the snow. Oh, the little girl, when I walked up to her, 
she said, I want you. Like, she had her arms out and was like, I want you. So I was like, come here, sweetheart. Picked her up and took her inside. Marcus brought her into the community center next door and called the police. She said her mom was laying on the floor. She wasn't paying attention and she was sleeping. Police determined Emily's mom had been dead in their apartment for nearly 24 hours before Emily was found. I just thought, what if that was my kid? What if that was my kid? Even if I was okay and my kid got out and somebody found him, what if that was mine? Little Emily is with her grandmother now. They're planning on meeting Marcus soon to say thank you in person. Wow, so far investigators have not yet said how that woman died. Hundreds of people took to the streets of Alabama yesterday demanding answers after a teenager was arrested last weekend. It left that teen with severe injuries. A warning now because the image of his injuries may be disturbing to some. Investigators are looking into the details surrounding the arrest of 17-year-old Ulysses Wilkerson last Saturday. Police say Wilkerson was injured while he was resisting arrest but the community says they want answers. The family requested to see all the videos of the incident and community organizers want the officer involved to be fired and they've made a series of demands, including mandatory diversity and mental health training for officers. The training would also include specific instructions on use of force. People are tired, man. When you got mothers that are sitting up there and tell me that the sad reality is at least youths get to live another day. Most people get killed. Is that our reality? That we done became so desensitized to life that we look at the normal as them getting killed and not beat up and living another day? That needs to stop. Organizers say they're planning another rally. No date has yet been set. Wilkerson was charged with two misdemeanors, obstructing governmental operations and resisting arrest. Check out this video. A security camera caught a pair of mountain lion cubs. Yeah. There they are at the front door of this house in California. You can see the two little guys curiously looking around yesterday. One jumps up at the door. Eventually, playtime ended and they left to go find something else with which to play. The homeowner contacted Fish and Wildlife and they said the Cubs have been spotted in that same neighborhood earlier this month. Officials believe they're most likely roaming around the streets of that neighborhood because there's a nearby trail where they used to be that is now closed. I see apples and pears and fruit. I see a zucchini. <laughs> All right. People lined up to experience the magic of float making as preparations are in full bloom for tomorrow's 129th annual Running of the Rose Parade. Yesterday was crunch time for thousands of volunteers as they put the final touches on hundreds of floats that are being built for the parade. It costs between $250,000 and $500,000 to make one float. Three. That is a squirrel, a thieving squirrel, attacking a police officer in New York. It zings around the room, bouncing off furniture and walls, trying to dodge the police. You're never going to take me alive. The police were called after that squirrel snuck into the house and was seen stealing cookies. <laughs> oh, man. They were eventually able to corral the critter. They released it back outside with just a warning. That's scary. Bitterly cold temperatures are making dangerous conditions outside. There's a live look at Bull Shoals. Hey, at least the water's still moving. It's not frozen over. That's good news. Matt Jones is the next with a look at tonight's lows as well as what you can expect.